It's 600 years old, enormous, one of the artistic wonders of our world, one of the first oil paintings and one of the first works from the Renaissance art period, and yet there is also still a lot of mystery surrounding it. The Ghent altarpiece was probably painted by Jan van Eyck. Or maybe it was his enigmatic brother Hubert. Or did both of them work on it? This is the first of a two-part video on this altarpiece. The design and history of the altarpiece are the subject of this video, while next week's video will discuss the content of the panels in more detail. The altarpiece has the four central panels with two doors attached to it with hinges, each door containing four more panels. When the altarpiece is opened, which is the most famous view, there are a total of 12 panels. But the doors can also be closed, which makes the eight panels on the back of the doors visible. The idea here was that people who initially see the altarpiece with the doors closed would see several panels with relatively muted colors. But then, if the doors were opened, the viewer would be overwhelmed by the beautiful display of bright colors. The altarpiece has had quite a tumultuous life of itself, having survived the iconoclastic riots of the 16th century, several wars, in which the altarpiece was always of great interest to the oppressor, fire, and the front and back panels were even sawed apart such that they could be displayed together. But a century ago, all parts came back together, although one of the panels was actually stolen later and is still missing, but more on that later. Nowadays, it's heavily protected by a steel and glass construction and on display in the St. Bavo Cathedral in Ghent. As mentioned, in next week's video, the panels are discussed in much greater detail, but it's good to know the basic structure of this masterpiece first. Let's start with the back. When the doors are closed, the altarpiece measures 375 by 260 centimeters. For centuries, the doors were only open on Sunday and other festive holidays, but the doors were closed for the rest of the year. So on weekdays, people would see the more muted part, showing the Annunciation of the Birth of Christ at the center, with Mary on the right and the Archangel Gabriel on the left. Above them are two prophets and two sibyls who are witnessing this important biblical event. They are the ones who had predicted the coming of Jesus in the past. From left to right, they are the prophet Zechariah, the Eritrean sibyl, the Cumean sibyl, and the prophet Micah. At the bottom of the back of the doors are the man who commissioned the altarpiece for his chapel in the St. Bavo Cathedral. We can see him on the left, and his wife is shown on the right. In between them are the illusionary statues of Saint John the Baptist and John the Evangelist, one of them the patron saint of the church, and the other was probably the patron saint of the chapel. So, they're guarding in some way the content of the inside of the altarpiece. And when the doors are opened, the bright colors of the other scenes appear. The opened altarpiece measures 340 by 460 centimeters, which is 11 by 15 feet. The central panel of the lower register shows the adoration of the mystic lamb, showing the lamb on an altar with blood streaming from his breast into a chalice. It symbolizes a biblical text about how the lamb would take away the sins of the world. Surrounding the altar and fountain are various groups of people representing the people that praise the lamb. The other panels on the lower register represent even other groups of significant people in the Christian religion. The just judges, knights of Christ, hermits and pilgrims. The top register shows three magnificent portraits, God at the center, the Virgin Mary on the left and Saint John the Baptist on the right. The two panels next to them show a group of singing angels and a group of angels making music. And finally, the outer two panels show Adam and Eve. If you like art history, you may be familiar with Jan van Eyck, the Belgian artist from the beginning of the 15th century. 
We don't know exactly when he was born and where, and what kind of education he had, but there is consensus that about 20 artworks can confidently be attributed to him, like some of the works you see here. But Jan had two brothers and a sister who were also painters, and the most intriguing among them is his older brother Hubert. That brings us back to the question of who painted the Ghent altarpiece. There is somewhat reliable evidence that in the 16th century the altarpiece was framed and the inscription on that frame read that Hubert van Eyck, referred to as the greater than anyone, started the altarpiece, probably around 1425, and that Jan van Eyck, referred to as the second best in art, completed the work by 1432. The frame was destroyed in the 16th century, and so we cannot analyze it anymore, but this has led to the leading theory that both brothers worked on it. Hubert, however, would die in 1426, a year after he supposedly started working on it. And so it makes sense to conclude that a few years later, Jan van Eyck took over his brother's work and finished it in 1432. However, it remains a guess of how big the contribution of Hubert was and which parts were painted by Jan van Eyck. Did Hubert just make the underdrawing and Jan the actual painting? Extensive analysis of the altarpiece has not given any conclusive evidence, especially because there are other artists, probably from the van Eyck workshop, who have also contributed to parts of the painting. Based on my understanding of the latest research of the altarpiece, my guess is that Hubert created the majority of the design and a good part of the underdrawings, and that he had started painting the central panel on the bottom, the adoration of the mystic lamb, but that he could not finish it in time. Jan van Eyck subsequently overpainted several parts of that panel and completed the rest of the altarpiece. When the altarpiece is open, there are 12 panels, but one of them was actually not painted by Van Eyck. It is the panel at the left bottom, as this panel was stolen in 1934 and has never been found back. It is actually still the subject of an incredible amount of speculation, so if you have any ideas or theories, you may as well write a book about it, as many of those stories have turned into popular books in the last century. Well, this was an overview of the design and history of the famous Ghent altarpiece. I hope you enjoyed it, and next week's video will look at the details of each of the panels, trying to understand better what the Van Eyck painted. They were both initially trained as miniature painters, so there is a lot of detail in each of the panels that we can look at. I hope to welcome you to part 2 of this video soon, and if you enjoyed this part, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the video. Thanks for watching.